Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be covering all of the new makeup that just arrived at Sephora. So if you want to see my thoughts on all that is new, then just keep watching. Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. So a lot of new makeup has finally started to come out and I've been doing a lot of testing lately. And I thought with the VIB event around the corner, it would be a good time to cover all of the new makeup that I've tried, what's worth it, what's not. I still do have a Sephora VIB recommendations video coming up soon to tell you what's the best of the best. But for now, we're just gonna go over every Everything that I have that's on the just arrived page on the Sephora website and there's some things that weren't on there that I still consider pretty new so I threw them in this video as well. Me being the curious product knowledge enthusiast that I am, I had to try out so much of this makeup so that I could round it all up for you. Let's get into it. We are going to start off with foundations. I've tried four new foundations. The first one, we'll do the one that I'm wearing now, is the Sephora brand. So this is from the Sephora collection Best Skin Ever Foundation. I have mine in the shade 15.5N. This is the shade that I'm currently wearing. It's not my perfect shade. It's like a half shade too light, but I can definitely make it work if you're around the same skin tone as me. And unfortunately this foundation didn't work out for me. I'm trying to get better about trying Sephora collection products. It's on my list of videos to eventually do a full face of Sephora collection and this was going to be my introduction to Sephora collection base products and I heard good things about this so I was excited about it. I liked the packaging. It feels very luxe but of course it's a little bit more affordable and unfortunately just didn't work out for me. I feel like the coverage is uneven. It takes a lot of work to blend it out. It's a thicker consistency and and I just have to keep building in certain places because it's not covering an even amount. Now, this does give a light to medium coverage, definitely more so on the light side, hence the best skin ever. So it's supposed to be a natural skin-like foundation, but I just feel like it was really patchy in areas and I had to keep going back to blending it out. And it does look a little bit dry on my skin. Sometimes with very thin foundations, if they're a tad light, I feel like that does emphasize the dryness of my skin, but it just doesn't smooth out the texture, you know? It doesn't do anything flattering really to my skin except evening it out a little bit. And I just feel like I have way better foundations than this that do have a light coverage. So this isn't one that I find myself ever really wanting to reach for because it just, it doesn't benefit my skin. The next foundation that I have is from Westman Atelier. Now Westman Atelier came out, I believe about a month or so so to Sephora, it's not a new brand, this is not a new product, but it is new to Sephora and I had personally never tried Westman Atelier so I did pick up a few things so you'll see a few things throughout this video but we'll start off with the Vital Skin Foundation Stick. Now this is quite pricey, that's the catch with Westman Atelier, they're a very luxury brand at a higher luxury price and the packaging of this foundation stick is beautiful. Now I wanted to get along with foundation sticks very well. I got mine in the shade Atelier 2, which is a pretty good color for me. And this just didn't work out for me as well either, unfortunately. Some of you guys love it so much. I tried it on in a testing new makeup video and it just looked cakey and uneven and really dry on my skin. It really settled onto my skin in a weird way and it didn't wear well either. I had a couple of suggestions from you guys to try a brush to spread it out and then a sponge to kind of sink get into the skin more and I tried it that way it still didn't work for me regardless it's about $70 and I just feel like I shouldn't have to work so hard to make a foundation work for me it just again like this for it wasn't very flattering on my skin so unfortunately this did not work out for me so I don't really recommend it. Lots of new foundation, guys. So the next one is from KVD Beauty. I'm sure you are sick of hearing about this. I would like to say I got my review out before it went trending on TikTok. So it was very weird because I didn't think that video would get much views because I don't really cover KVD Beauty. And then it just got a bunch of hits. It's one of my most viewed videos in the last few months uh, because I found out later that it went trending on TikTok. I don't get makeup TikTok on my For You page at all. I just don't watch makeup TikToks. But I Anyways, this went trending because of how full coverage, it's like really shock factor with this. You get a bunch on the brush and you do a stripe down your skin and you see how full coverage it was. Truthfully, you guys, 
I really do like this foundation. This is uh, my favorite one that I've tried. However, if you have oily skin, run far away from this. Now, it's not marketed towards oily skin, to be fair. I have normal to dry skin and it works really well. It's still not the most long wearing on my skin. It does make me look a little bit oily, but because of how smooth it makes my skin look, how even, the amount of coverage I can get from this, it's totally worth it. It's definitely one of my favorite foundations that I've tried in a while. For me, it's worth the hype, but I don't think it's going to be for everybody because it, the wear time kind of sucks, if I'm being completely honest. But it just makes your skin look so good that for me, it's okay. It's a really beautiful foundation. It can give you full, full coverage, but if you use a sponge and you just spread it out very lightly, you can get a medium coverage and it looks very skin-like and it blends out so quickly it is so easy to apply so I've really been enjoying this and unfortunately all of the shades seem to be sold out with the exception of a few so I'm gonna keep tabs on when this comes back in stock I have it added to my watch list on shop tiger hopefully this is still relevant but on the KVD Beauty website, they did restock most shades. I see a few shades getting out of stock. So if you do want it, definitely check out the KVD website. I'll have it linked down below for you. Sephora did get a few more shades in stock as well, I guess, with that KVD restock. So yeah, um, they're popping up. So I'll put the links down below for you guys. Okay, very last foundation slash concealer. I've talked about this a lot. It's not necessarily a new product, but it was still on the just arrived list on Sephora. So I thought I'd talk about the Marc Jacobs Extra Shot Caffeine Concealer and Foundation. Do not recommend it. I do not like it. It does not wear well. It settles into the fine lines on my skin. It looks a little bit cakey on my under eyes. I've tried it as both a foundation and a concealer. I don't like it either way. Now, when I spread it out as a foundation, I would say I prefer it a little bit more like that, but it just doesn't wear nicely. It just doesn't look nice on my skin. And I don't know. It's just a product that whenever I wear it, I look at my skin and I'm like... Could be better. So while it does even out my skin and I would say I've worn this a ton because not a lot of new concealers or foundations came out until recently. So this was like the first to start off the whole foundation release saga. And I wore this a lot to make sure I didn't like it. And every single time I didn't like it, it's just not that good for me. Didn't work out that great for me. A lot of powders have released lately and I do have intentions of getting up a full in-depth powder ranking for you guys, but we're quickly gonna go over my experiences so far. For some reason, I'm putting a lot of effort into testing out all of these different powders so I can really tell you what's worth it and what's not. So I'm not gonna do many comparisons today because I wanna leave the element of surprise for my powder ranking video, but we're just gonna go down the list. The first one, this is the one that I'm wearing right now, is the Kosas Feathery Cloud Set Powder powder. It's very, very nice, but it's oddly getting hard pan already. Um, it's a very lightweight powder. I think this is really great for oily skin. Now, it works really well on my dry skin, but if I don't properly take care or exfoliate my skin, it does show off those areas that I didn't take care of. So as long as you take care of your skin, you'll be fine, even if you do have dry skin. It's very lightweight on the skin, hence the name Cloud Set. It really does feel like a cloud. It does a really nice job of mattifying the skin without being too heavy. So, so far, I'm really enjoying it. Now, what's special about this is the glowiness underneath your skin really does peak through with this while still covering it just a little bit. For example, today I went in with a cream blush and I just felt like the shine on it was emphasizing my texture a little bit too much. I looked a little bit wet and gross. So I went back in with this powder and put it right on top and you could see that I still had that cream blush on, but it took away just the right amount of like oiliness. So it's a really nice, easy to use lightweight powder. I really like it. The next powder is the Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder. I have to say, I think of all the powders that have come out recently, this one's probably my favorite. When you apply it, you really can't tell that you put it on. It's like a completely traceless powder. It doesn't really add anything, nor does it take away anything on your face because it's so traceless. The only tip that I do have is go lighter than you expect. I was debating between this, which is 2N and 3N, and I'm so thankful I ended up with 2N because even even this is still a bit too dark. So while I said it doesn't add or take anything away, you can still see when I put it down, it kind of darkens my under eyes a little bit.
bit. So I would like to pick this up in a lighter shade, but I do feel like this is great for dry skin because it's like a gel consistency. So it does have a little bit more moisture than I would say the Kosas. It's a beautiful powder just to set the face. It really doesn't do anything more than that, but it sets the face so nice and keeps the moisture on your skin. And I really have been enjoying this a lot. The next one I used in yesterday's video, it is the Gucci Beauty Powder. And I've tested this multiple times as a powder foundation. I would say it gives a light to medium, more so medium coverage on the skin. But I think it works great as a setting powder. That's personally how I prefer it. So I would wear this to work all over my face with nothing underneath that looks great, it evens the skin. It does have a very natural sheen to it. And sheen is a strong word. You can just tell there's a little bit of a glow. It has a skin-like glow to it. I really like the way that this sets foundations because it's such a lightweight powder, but it still does add a little bit of coverage. Sometimes powders with coverage can be a little bit cakey and heavy on the skin. I don't feel that this is. It's really just a very versatile powder because I love that I can take a kabuki with it to add a little bit more coverage, but I can also use a lightweight brush to lightly set the skin, and I've very much been enjoying it. It's around $60. It's very pricey. It's a product that I would recommend if you want to pick it up, to pick it up during the VIB event, and half of the price goes into the experience of this because the packaging is just divine. So I've really been enjoying this powder a lot. The next one that I picked up, and you guys wanted an update because I recently hauled it. This is the Fenty Beauty Soft Matte Powder Foundation. I really like this powder. Now I have mine, let me open this on. I have mine in the shade 230, and this gives you a medium coverage, I would say, for a powder foundation, and it's very soft. It's described as a soft matte, which I agree with, and I'm a huge powder foundation lover, and this is one of my new favorites. It just gives the right amount of coverage while still staying natural. It wears very well. It blurs the skin. It just does all the right things that a powder foundation can do. You can also set over makeup as well with this, but I prefer to use it in its true form as a powder foundation. This definitely gets my stamp of approval and if you have not dove into the world of powder foundations, I think this is a great one to start off with. I definitely recommend getting a nice kabuki brush or even using the sponge, but I prefer a kabuki brush. I like that little bit more of an even spread, lighter coverage from this. Really, really nice because you don't want to lay on too much powder because then it really seeps into the lines on your skin. So getting a kabuki brush does the job and it literally looks like a normal foundation on your skin. I Love it. Last powder that we have is the Tatcha the Silk Powder Powder. I was really excited about this and uh, the packaging feels a little bit cheap to me. I'm not into that. I'm not into the sifter and to be completely honest, I'm not into the powder either. You might like this if you have oily skin, but on my dry skin, this really made my skin look more dry, especially on the under eyes. So with whatever concealer I was wearing when I would set it, my eyes would just look a little bit more crepey and wrinkly than normal. And you guys, I'm only 25. I'm not even 25. I'm 24. But, you know, I'm about to be 25. Anyways, that's besides the point. So, unfortunately, this powder, it did not work for me. I don't really like it. It's on the dry side. And it's quite pricey. And I just, there's so many other powders that have come out recently that are so much better than this. And really disappointed because a Tatcha product is always so exciting. All right, it's time to move on away from base and move into, like, bronzer blush highlight. So, we'll start off with the counterpart to the Marc Jacobs concealer. This is the Marc Jacobs Omega 3 Tantastic Glow Trio. Now this packaging is supposed to be like latte coffee. Obsessed with the packaging here and this is what the product inside looks like. Now this feels like it's a bit of an older product for me. I've been using it for quite a while and to be quite honest I'm not really that impressed by this. I love the bronzer but to be quite honest it's hard to get my brush in there. Obviously I make do. It's fine. Love the bronzer. This is a bronzer that already existed in their line and I actually use this bronzer in my makeup kit. This color in an individual compact. So beautiful. The blush also it's kind of like a nice nondescript pink. Really pretty. I like it. I enjoy using it. But the downfall of this is the highlighter. It's just a bit too deep for my skin tone and it looks a little bit chunky on the skin. It looks like it sits on the skin and it's just not as flattering as other highlighters that I have. So even when I use this, I stay away from the highlight. I just don't want to use it. It's not that pretty. It doesn't show up on my skin that well. It doesn't look smooth on the skin. It emphasizes texture. Pretty much everything that I don't like about a highlight this has, which is really disappointing. So overall, I mean, the blush and bronzer 
are very nice, but I just don't think it's worth it. I really wasn't in love with this product. I'm much happier with just having the bronzer in a single compact as opposed to these other two items because they're just, eh. you know, the blush is good, but it's a pink blush. The highlight, disappointing. So for me, I just wasn't into this. I also have a cream contour. This is from the Westman Atelier line. I used this today. So I have mine in the shade Biscuit. Now this, the official name of this is the Face Trace Contour Stick. So you have the beautiful magnetic, very heavy packaging that the Westman Atelier line has. And I really, really enjoy this. Now if you are deeper than me, you might not want this color. They do have a deeper color because it is quite light even on my skin, but this blends into the skin seamlessly. It's a very nice, light, natural color. Normally, I would say I kind of prefer a bit of a deeper contour stick, but that's okay. This works great, and it's, like I said, it's very natural, and it's great if I have a foundation that I feel like is too light for me. I'll just go with the flow, and I'll add this on top, and it's a great combo. It blends into the skin very easily, and I love a cream contour and bronze just because it's the most natural shadow and depth that you can give the skin and this one definitely is a thumbs up. It is of course pricey like the regular Westman Atelier line is but this is a thumbs up. I really enjoy it. Cream cheek products are definitely very in style right now. I love a good cream blush so we have quite a few to talk about today. So we'll start off with the Westman Atelier. We'll continue with that. I picked up the Baby Cheeks blush shade in the shade Petal. I'm a basic pinky rose cheek kind of gal and it comes in light gray packaging similar to the rest of the line and here is what the color looks like. It has a good amount of pigment to it. It gives a nice sheen to the skin and it wears very well. Overall this is a solid cream blush. I don't think you need to run out and grab it if you have a lot of cream blushes in your collection but if you're looking for one really nice one that you're going to enjoy the experience of then I do recommend this. I do think it's a really nice color. It stays on the skin very well. It has a nice wear time and it gives the most natural sheen. It's a little bit more matte than the one that I'm wearing today, which is a bit more dewy, but I don't I really like this. This is a very good cream blush. Let's get into the ones that I'm wearing. So Tower 28. This is not a new formula for them, but they came out with three new colors. Now these three I did receive in PR. I have one more color of this formula that's really nice. I really enjoy this formula. So I'm wearing the shade Power Hour and it looks quite intimidating. It's not as intimidating as it looks. It does sheer out. So the colors that they launched I feel like are a bit deeper, but look, if you just tap your sponge in a couple times, you'll see it's a very natural color. And this color in particular is extremely my skin, but better just spend the day out in the sun kind of look. Now these I feel like can get a little bit too shiny for me, which is why I like to go in with a little bit of powder after applying or going in with a powder blush after because the color can fade away pretty quickly. So I do recommend taking a colored blush that's powder and just lightly setting it and then the color will stay. But what I love about this formula is I love that it's in a compact. I like to take my sponge, I like to lightly spread it out because that makes the color less overpowering on my face. And the finish is really nice and dewy. Now, like I said, when I have that initial application, it is a little bit too dewy for what I prefer, especially like right in this area, which is why I like to go in with powder right here. But it does give such a skin-like dewy glow that's very on trend right now. The other two shades that we have are After Hours, which is a nice berry. And then the lighter shade that came out is the Rush Hour blush, which is a little bit lighter if you have a lighter skin tone. But these are really great one and done cream blushes. They're very easy to use. That's the main thing about these that I I love is just how quick and easy they are to throw on just to run out of your house. I feel like the Westman Atelier is a bit more heavy duty, long wearing, you're gonna have a long day, but if you're running out, you just want a natural glow to your skin, a little bit of color really quickly, then I would go for the Tower 28. The last cream blush that I have to talk about is from NARS. This is the Air Matte Blush. So this isn't super new, but I did want to talk about it because it was new to me and it still came out this year. They came out with a line of these, so there are a lot more other colors. I chose the shade Orgasm, and maybe it's just a shade that I 
I picked out, but this is just not my favorite. I found it to fade away really quickly and it just didn't look like I was wearing anything. It's like a moussey consistency and the color itself you'll see is light. So that might have to do with it, but there's like very fine shimmers in here that I'm not that big of a fan of and that's just because this is the orgasm shade. That's my own fault, but I just feel like it's a bit drying on the skin for being a mousse and it doesn't last very long. It kind of just fades away. I'm okay with putting a powder blush on top to hold the color, that's fine, but I'd much rather go with something a bit more creamy like the Tower 28 to hold on to that pigment. So I don't think this is bad by any means, but I'm still figuring out the best way to use it. So I'm not blown away by it. So that's all we have for the face. It's time to move into eyes. We're gonna start off with the eyebrows because I have like five eyebrow products to show you. We'll start off with the ABH Brow Freeze Brow Styling Wax. This is quite a popular product, so I'm only going to touch on it. This works really well if you're into feather brows. Today I went with the do your brows first with this and then go in with the pencil afterwards. I wasn't that big of a fan of it, but if you like feather brows, this really does hold the brows in place. It gives you kind of almost like a glue texture, which I'm not really a big fan of. So this isn't something that I'm personally in love with. I prefer a softer brow, something that's not pasted to my face or my hairs are sticking right up my forehead. So. For the style of brows that I do, this isn't my cup of tea. I don't see myself grabbing for it a lot. I just like a nice clear brow gel like this. But if you're into really styling your brows and making them go in certain directions, this is really nice. This is probably my favorite styling wax for brows that I've tried. Huda Beauty also came out with the Bomb Brows and I've been loving this. Now, my only complaint about this is I feel like the component's thick, but the product itself is so so thin so I feel like it's so easy to break. Now it hasn't actually broken on me but I just would prefer to have the feeling of a thinner pencil in my hand knowing that the product is already so thin but if you are looking for a product to give you super fine brow like hair strokes you're going to love this product. Now, I don't really like running this through my whole brow. One, I feel like my eyebrows are drinking up this product and it's just gonna go to nothing soon and it just takes forever. But what I really like to use this for is to fill in these front hairs here. You know how sometimes, or back in the day, you know, we all like filled in here and it looked ridiculous? This is the perfect product to really create those brow hairs up front and it just looks so natural. So that's where I like to use this, just the front of my brows. I highly recommend it. It's definitely going to be in my VIB recommendations because I haven't had a pencil this thin and it's so good. We also have three new products from Charlotte Tilbury that I recently tried. Now I did upload this Sunday a video using the whole system, a whole wear test through a workout. So if you want more details on these products, definitely check that out. Overall, the Charlotte Tilbury brow products are really, really nice. We'll start off with the legendary brows. Somebody told me she didn't reformulate it. She just added new colors, but the website says new formulation. Either way, I've never tried this before. So I got mine in the shade Soft Brown. It's just a tinted brow gel, and this was really nice. It almost left the brows feeling like they were glued a little bit, so it does give your brows some hold. Now the shade I have doesn't have too much of color, which I prefer. I heard if you get darker colors in this, you will get more of a tint, but I prefer just to have a lighter tint so that it doesn't get on my skin and look messy. But you can see how it's holding the brow hair down and it's controlling them very well so for me when I go to work I don't like filling in my brows but I will use a product like this and I've been enjoying this a lot it holds its shape it holds its color all day so this is definitely a formula I approve of I love how tiny the wand is the brow sheet is her new form of brow pencil that's like a little mini benefit pencil now it has a slight point to it but the point fades away after the first use so then it loses the definition that it can give you that first wear I think this this is a solid eyebrow pencil. I don't necessarily know that I'll be repurchasing it. What I do like is this can come out and you can pay, I believe it's $15 for a refill. So that actually makes it cheaper than say the benefit, but it's not a bad pencil at all. It works great. If you want a Charlotte Tilbury pencil, I do recommend it, but I still think I prefer like my ABH or my benefit just because it's a bit more fine than this pencil. So I like it. It's a good one. It's right in between the precisely my brow and the thicker one, the 
Goof Proof, I believe is what it's called from Benefit. So it's that happy medium if you've been looking for that. But for me, it's just not what I want. And finally, the last Charlotte Tilbury eyebrow product is the Brow Fix. This is her clear brow gel. I personally prefer a clear brow gel that gives me a bit more hold and stiffness. I like it when my brows feel crunchy. But this one is nice if you don't like when your brows feel crunchy. It does give your brows a really nice hold. Now, what I love most about this is the spoolie that she uses. They're very short hairs and they're very close together. So it separates each eyebrow. So it really makes your eyebrows look defined and fluffy. So the spoolie alone is my favorite part about this. And it doesn't give you too crunchy of a brow while still holding them in place. So this is a really nice brow gel. It is time to move on to eyeshadow palettes. I only have three to talk to you about. There haven't been a ton of eyeshadow releases. So we'll start off with the one that I'm wearing, which of course is the Natasha Denona Circo Loco palette. I don't think this is a palette for everybody. I mean, the layout needs to be redone if you can't see looks that you want to create. There's lots of people online who have reorganized this palette into a way that makes it make sense. But to be quite frank, if you're not going to wear these colors, do not buy this palette. It is very, very expensive. If these are colors that you see yourself using, it's a very nice palette. These are very good quality shadows. That is why Natasha Denona has the reputation that she has. Every formula in here works amazing, pigmented, beautiful, blendable, very unique formulations. This is the look that I created today. I actually think this palette is quite cohesive. The problem is she didn't lay it out in a way that is cohesive, that looks cohesive, but you actually can create a lot of cohesive looks with this. And I really enjoy the quality. So I'm only gonna recommend this if you feel like these are color stories that you're going to use and most likely the answer is no so it depends on who you are what you like to wear I will say I've enjoyed the looks that I've created with it but they these aren't even colors that I wear so if I didn't have a channel this is a palette that I would have passed on but just know though the formulas on point for sure the next palette that we have is from Urban Decay, it's the Naked Wild West. This was not a palette that I was excited about. I didn't really want it, but I ended up getting it anyways. And I really do like it. It was a nice, pleasant surprise for me. It's nothing that I needed in my collection. It's nothing that's really unique by any means, but every time I use it, I enjoy the quality. I enjoy the color story. I love that you can get both warm and cool toned looks from it. And I can see somebody not having a large collection really enjoying this palette because you get pop of color but you also get mostly neutral so I feel like for the everyday person this is definitely an appropriate palette now getting deep into the quality of it there's a couple shades that I find to be a bit lackluster and not as good but for the most part across the board I definitely think it's worth the money and if you feel this is a palette that's unique to your collection or that you are actually going to wear a lot I do recommend it the last palette that we have is from Vizzy Art this is the Paris Love Letter palette and unfortunately this palette did not work out for me I think if you are going to get a busy art palette that you should go in other directions than this one It's a very soft palette though, and you might like that and I love the packaging of that You guys know I'm a huge busy art stan. I love busy art. I love the company I love the family aspect behind it But for me, it was just a bit too soft and I feel like the shimmer shades they disappeared Quite honestly, you'd put it on your lid and you blend it just a little bit and it would completely disappear. It's just not the best representation of the Vizzy Art formula, in my opinion. You might really like these soft tones and the barely there kind of makeup look and in that case, by all means, go for it. Not every shade in here is bad. It's just not my favorite of theirs and I feel like if you want to get a Vizzy Art palette, I wouldn't direct you towards this palette. There's better ones, but yeah, I don't know. I just don't really like it that much. I have one eyeliner from Gucci. I've used it in the last couple of videos. This is the long lasting cold liner. I just got the black shade. I just ordered the light blue shade. So here's the thing. When I heard cold liner, I thought it was going to be something that was really blendable, very malleable. It's not. It's actually, it has some drag to the skin. It's not the easiest pencil to use. So if you're new to eyeliner pencils, I don't necessarily recommend this. But I will say the lasting power on this is 
awesome. So as a black pencil, this is great. It doesn't bleed. I have it in my upper waterline right now. It's going to last all day and it's not bleeding really to my lower lash line, which is what you will find with a cool pencil. It stays put. If you have hooded lids, if you ever notice when your eyeliner transfers to your upper lid, that doesn't happen with this. It just stays put. So the lasting power is really what has amazed me about this pencil. But again, I don't like that it's not the easiest to apply. Like an Urban Decay is that perfect medium of it being really smooth and creamy but still having a great lasting power time. So I like this. I don't love it. I don't think it's worth the price but dang it does stay in place. Last two products we have lip liners. They are both very very different formulas. I have the Gucci lip liner formula. Oh my hair is sticking to my lips. And I have the Natasha Denona lip liner formula. So we'll start off with Gucci because that's what I'm wearing today. Now I finally got the chance to wear Miel which is this nice kind of orangey lip liner. It goes with my lower lash line. I've been dying to use this color but there haven't been very many occasions where this orange shade just looked good. But that's what Miel looks like. Now I checked online today. The shade Nude is sold out and it's probably my favorite most used shade from the line. It's just like a nude pinky beige kind of color. So if that comes back into stock I do highly recommend the nude shade. And I will say the shade that I'm wearing right now I do not have another lip liner like. Now the formulation of these they are a bit more dry and waxy so you'll see when I applied this it, it looked dry on my lips I applied it everywhere it was not comfortable I had to put a lip gloss on top but these have a decent staying power not the longest lasting I've had but they last decent you just get a lot of control because it's a little bit more dry and I really enjoy the colors that they have in the line so I don't recommend you run out and grab these but if you see a color that you like and you will see yourself wearing a lot I do recommend it especially the shade number three that I'm wearing because I do not have another lip liner like this so like that is when this would be worth it to me but if all of their colors match say my Pat McGrath I'm gonna pick the Pat McGrath formula over this and finally we have Natasha Denona lip Liners. This is a complete different formula than the Gucci. These are a lot more creamy, so let me show you the shades I have. So Michelle is a little bit more coral peachy. I haven't found myself reaching for this color a lot. It's just not the kind of lip liner that I go for. And then I have Natasha. Now Natasha is more of that deep nude, which is more my speed. These are so creamy. So unlike the Gucci today, where you could see it was dry when I put it all over my lips, you can use these Natasha Denona's as all over the lip lipsticks. Very creamy, very comfortable, very easy to apply, but not the longest wearing. Now they do have a decent amount of wear time for how creamy they are, but the Gucci is going to outlast the Natasha. You know, there's no really happy medium. Either you want yours to be really long wearing or you want it to be really creamy. That's kind of your prerogative there. I would say it depends. I think for every day I would prefer the Natasha Denona, but there's something about the Gucci colors that I just really like. So there we have it. Those are all of the new items at Sephora that I've tried and my thoughts. I'm sorry it was kind of a long video and a lot of talking but with the Sephora VIB event coming up I wanted to make sure that you are thoroughly prepared so there will be a lot of Sephora videos coming your way. If you guys aren't subscribed to my channel already I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys have a good one.